Hi there, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be comparing two machines. This Bishop Wand Packer and this $42 machine that I got off of Amazon. Let's see how different they are. Alright, now that that's over with, there's a Bishop Wand Packer. MSRP is probably a lot. I'll put it on the card. And uh, this is a knockoff machine that's shaped like a bomb. I got it off of Amazon. And I wanted to see these two next next to each other because, I mean, past the size and profile of these. Um, that's to, maybe to illustrate a point, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying nothing. All I'm saying is these are kind of a lot alike, uh, except for the price. I think the Bishop comes in somewhere around $700 or something. So let's let's do just some basic tests with this to see how different that they really are. Uh, starting off with the weight. So I'll just go ahead and split this and grab another piece of paper towel. It's been using this to wrap them in it. We'll go bishop on one side and uh, the bomb on the other. Do you mark it out? All right, weight on these to start out with. Tear this out. Bishop machine comes in at 121.273 grams while the bomb let this tear out again is going to come in at 159.170 grams cool pretty close weight wise 30 grams is not a whole lot um design wise on these uh, the bishop even though it's a little bit lighter feels a bit more sturdy to the touch the smaller profile is kind of nice uh we had gold plated versus a silver plated rca in the back which you know is probably going to give it a little bit more consistent power on it um tear part of the old bomb machine here where our mount point is on this front cast this thing is cheap this is 10. uh let's say with the front front chuck <laughs> uh so we'll do chuck on this uh weighs in at 53.535 uh grams and the bishop one of these parts are interchangeable that'd be hilarious comes in at a startling 45.885 grams so even though this feels like so cheap and it isn't it's just the side parts here right the, the threading bit down here is actually pretty good but the the bishop um seems to be just made with a higher quality material i mean even how dense this is it seems really 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 light um i can make this flex a little bit just by squeezing with my fingers which is crazy and the bishop is not is not gonna budge so that's kind of cool i mean you'd, you'd expect this to cost a little bit more uh when you get into like i don't know some of this like i don't know whatever i'll edit that out so now that we got this let's take it apart and we'll start comparing the main body of the bishop versus this bomb oh that's fun so while the main uh like receiver on the front there is metal some grade of aluminum or tin the back of this is plastic it feels plastic well i guess it is no it is aluminum it's just really 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 soft aluminum it's got a um not even powder coated there's just a paint that's laid on top of it it easily chips off we'll go ahead and test the uh two main bodies here against each other i mean even the bishop like this one's really 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 flimsy as well um and after just a couple openings on it here as well there's no uh set balls or anything with this and you go to screw it down so there's probably a little bit less resistance the threading on the nose is roughly the same although the bishop seems to be a little bit wider um rear casing on this i mean these these are about the same material strength so um tear out again let's go with our bomb is it the bomb roughly 28.842 grams for the body and uh let's do that one the bishop oh yeah there we go so it's 28 and this one's about 25.346 so whatever's gonna be left is literally gonna be just the motor on this so 
it's kind of interesting if we're, if we're looking at this side by side, I mean, the motors, the Bishop look like it's a little bit wider. The cam on this looks like it's, what's a 5.0 cam, that's a monster. Um, it looks like it maybe has a little bit better quality just in general. Um, because this has a loop pull on this, well, this has a fixed um, cam for the pivot. So like, it's not saying that these don't work well, it's just very easy to manufacture them. Um, the motor on this, I mean, golly, it looks pretty much almost the same. Wine wise, yeah, the Bishop is maybe a little bit better enclosed, but it doesn't seem like there's too much of a difference here. Now does there, it's kind of crazy. So, Let's go ahead and pull these two apart and see what is inside. All right, turn that off and start pulling this sucker apart. All right, bodies and mounts removed here. Bishop is, looks like it's heat sealed or something that's going in there. I'll have to break this apart in a second, but cam wise, I mean, you can see like right off the hop, this thing is way beefier than that. I mean, even past the fact that it's going to be a 5 0 stroke on this, it looks like it's a little bit better built. Uh, push rods on these. Surprisingly enough, the cheap machine has one that's a little bit thicker. Uh, ball ends, one is capped on, which is kind of a problem when you start using these for long term. How these pressure fit caps on there, unless it's been notched on the inside and the sleeve is actually applied with a, a which I don't think it'd be done on these cheap ones anyways. Unless it's capped on the side, there's a lot of pressure put on this and there's a notch on the inside of that sleeve when it goes on. These are going to come loose and they'll create noise or they'll just fall off, which that means you're going to have to replace another one of these, which at the same time isn't too big of a deal because if you look, this is this is literally just a needle bar that's been bent, right? You, so you can, you can manufacture your own of these if you have a bunch of needle bars sitting around, just the pair of snips an angle guide, you too can create your own cam. Uh, these ones a little bit fancier, right? Multiple points of contact here. Things are attaching. It's a nice smooth operation of these. But this one feels a little bit more rigid even than that one because it's, uh, even though it's thicker, this one probably a different grade of metal, which we'll end up having to get some hardness testing machines here in the near future to see. Anyways, weight wise on these comparison, on the cams, the Bishop cam. Are you gonna friggin' go here, guy, or what? There we go, let's tear it out. Bishop cam, 5.592 grams. And the bomb that we got here is <laughs> 3.463 grams on the cam. It's a noticeably lighter weight on this, which is kind of wild. Um, that doesn't mean it's really going to affect performance. I mean, but one of the good things about these heavier cams when they go to spin around, there's since there's more like weight behind it, the force that's being delivered, especially if you have a little bit of float in your machine, this is going to feel a lot more slappy than one like this. Um, now, that's not saying, I mean, like, literally, these are far different apparatuses here that are being used, but um, that's not saying that this isn't going to be as efficient, but thank God, you know, for a $700 machine, you're getting something like this. Um, Motor-wise on the bomb, it's a simple disc motor, two-point contact. This thing was epoxied like all hell. You can see all that glue that's set in there. They don't want you messing with this. Which is kind of cool, I mean, in one way, because if we start cleaning this with uh, corrosive chemicals, even though the paint is totally going to come off of whatever type of metal this is, it is going to hopefully keep a lot of it from coming inside of it, which is nice. Um, let me take a second. I'm going to pull this out, and we'll get back to the talk. All right. Pulling the bishop out here. There we go. <laughs> Back into this has a washer inside of it. Yay! It looks like there is something actually protecting the backside, which I'm so happy to see. Uh, grading of wires on this, the Bishop's very, very light. Um, and we have a Fallhaber, uh, Foul uh disc motor, which is great. So now we can go ahead and look this up and see how much that these cost, because that is gonna be Literally what you're paying for with these motors. This basic 
disc motor that we got here, which I mean, for all intents and purposes, is roughly the same thing. You can buy these for about $7, which is probably why this machine altogether costs, you know, nothing. <laughs> if this uh, fall hyper motor is genuine, that's going to be pretty expensive. So I'm going to go find the price right now. I'll take a screenshot, put it up there. And that's going to be what causes uh, the price of this. All right, after checking it out, these motors that Bishop used are $127 a piece. So let's do a breakdown here. $700 machine. We have $150 maybe with shipping going into the motor. If you're buying one in bulk, they'll probably get them for about $100. Uh, cam manufacturers, these cost about $3. Both parts uh, for the retainer and... The assembly, assemblies, it, it's pretty cheap. You know, you probably get these for two to three bucks a piece. We'll say grand total going into it. The machine minus the motor is going to cost you about 150 to $200. Retail markup, 2.5%. You're ending up with a, you know, five to $700 machine. Uh, on this $5 motor casing and stuff, maybe about 10. This costs a buck, set screws, nothing. So... For a $43 machine, there is probably about $15 to $20 in parts. So we have roughly a 2.5% or 2.5 times markup on the machine in the same way. So these are, these are both going to be roughly the same gross profit margins with each one you get. But with the Bishop, you literally are paying for this fancy motor. Now, is this the best motor that you can get? Oh, gosh, no. Um, but... It's well made by a reputable company, and you can expect this to last a whole lot longer than you would with one of these. Uh, downfall is is that you know maximum runtime on these listed on the site does does it end up giving you enough value for your money long term? And this is one of the biggest problems I have with most rotaries is that versus a coil, these don't last as long. Uh, we have coils that come into the shop that have been around for 30, 40, 50 years, and they still run perfectly. It's very simple, right? But when you start getting into these DC motors, they have a tendency to not run as long, right? You think about, like, uh, the old mechanical hard drives. Like, they could run forever, you know, 150,000 hours, but when they went, they went. And it's usually because the motor burnt out. So when we get into the operation of these, if you're a daily driver using one of these machines and you are using groupings that maybe aren't set for what the specifications are on the motors that you've got, they're not going to last as long. You know, maybe this is a machine that can last five to seven years with continuous use, but when you start piling on groupings that maybe it can't handle, that, that total time of operation is going to drop, you know, quite, quite a bit. Um, with steady use, I'd say maybe this Bishop, in my opinion, is a five-year machine. So five years from now, it's going to need either an overhaul, a rebuild, or something major happen to it to, to keep it in service. Um, this, this machine will last you a year or two. But, you know, the, the main failing point in this is going to be this, this cam. It's janky as hell, right? It's all, it's loose. It's not very, it's just, it's cheap. But uh, you can replace these for a dollar to three dollars if you want even the same ones. Um, or you could even just buy another machine. I mean, for the cost difference here, we'll say that this is literally greater than 10 times what the cost of this is for less than what this would cost to last you maybe five years. You could buy 10 years worth of these and still be saving a few hundred bucks to maybe go out and buy you that critical battery like we had taken apart in a previous one of these. So that's up to the user. Now, do I see any big difference in how these are going to operate? I honestly don't. I mean, if you look at them, they have basically the same parts. They have a disc motor, a cam, a body that sits through, and then, you know, your front face that you mount your cartridges into. There's not a whole lot of difference. Am I saying that these are not worth it? No, I mean, it's, it's up to you, of course. Um, I personally wouldn't spend a whole lot of money on this, but that's just me. I don't see... The utility difference of this to me is negligible. But then I also don't see the difference between Jordans and Keds. So, you know, 
Take it what you will, but that's the breakdown of this. Assembly is just gonna be the reverse of how it was taken apart. Um, but do you know, like if you are a person, you have a bishop and it's not working or something, you can go to the Falhaber. I don't even know how to say that, which I apologize anyone who maybe speaks whatever that language is. <laughs> uh, you can just go and you can buy one of these, you know, two pole DCs. You can resolder them on and just replace it um, rather than buying a new one. You know, it only cost you 100, $150 in total to get a, a new machine in essence. So if you are a person who likes to do DIY with these, you're like you're an old coil guy, you know, who uh, love to take care of and service, you know, their machine way back when, well, guess what? You can do it now. And it's actually a lot easier because just like how we'd buy coils, you can just go buy the machine motor that you want. Anyways, that's enough for today. Uh, probably not today anyways we gotta take apart that axis machine let us know what you think like subscribe do all that stuff and uh, buy a hat or a shirt we got one with a hipster cat it's pretty cool because i live in portland anyways that's it for today it's ryan from better tattooing signing off i want to put this thing back together i snapped all the glue so just as a heads up if anyone actually is using these things they want to rebuild it make sure you grab some barge cement <laughs> because my gosh uh, yeah the type of cement that these people have been using is the same stuff i used to fix the soles on my shoes <laughs> resole the shoe because this stuff is so heavy duty Work. I should use this in a well ventilated area, which we are out in the garage. And you can see this is literally the same stuff they use to glue this down, which to me is actually pretty funny. Go ahead and drop some of our glue in there. Slap her on the sides as well, because, you know, why not? And we can set it back in, and we're all good to go. Just gotta let it dry now. Sweet. So if you are pulling this apart and everyone does need some glue, we're not sponsored by them. Go buy yourself some barge. It's great. Make sure when you store it, put the lid down like this. Otherwise, if there's a little bit of air gets in this, this thing will dry out really quick. I've had this can for years. And I'm, I'm bound, or did, did, I'm very, I'm, I don't know. I just always figure it's because I stored it on its lid. Anyways, that's it.